I, so real quick, I appreciate this one because the next the, the next uh, uh, poster, right? Strictly was like, there's a bunch of context that you don't need. So they just put it in long story. Haha. I appreciate you. You're a real one. I just want you to know that OP. <laughs> uh, the title is called Consequences of Your Actions. The description. Hey, guys, I could use a little help with the campaign I'm running. I'm running this three campaign trilogy, and we are currently in the second campaign. Jesus. The entire trilogy is based around Asmodeus trying to break out of the nine hells using the party. Long story, haha. Thank you. Uh, recently, okay. one of the players has uh, was offered something that had some perks when, and some very serious negatives attached to it as well. He was told if he refused the offer, there would be severe consequences for either him or one of his party members. He refused the offer, which made a ton, ton of sense for him not to accept it. What do you guys think would be good ideas for a severe consequence that isn't punishing, but still feels weighty enough? Any ideas would be hugely appreciated. Context, the players are level 12. This campaign will go into level 15. They're currently living in Waterdeep right now and are currently helping Victoro Castellanter. I don't actually know who that is. To become the Lord new open Water lord. Deep. I assume he's... Ah. Or one uh, of the, uh, the Castellanter. If you play uh, if you play Dragon Heist Waterdeep, the Castellanters are one of the people you can like help become the Lords of Waterdeep. Gotcha. Uh, said someone said uh, uh, yeah, edit. Someone brought up that I didn't bring up the entity, which is a good point. Uh, the offer was from Asmodeus, but it was basically agreeing to be Victoro's hitman in a way that Victoro would have uh, phrases he would use to control the player. So you, you just become the Manchurian candidate. Manchurian candidate. Uh, uh, there are some perks as well. How to punish your players or give your players consequences that doesn't feel like you're just fucking them over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a good question because this is not, um, you know, my players being a baby bitch or whatever. Um, yeah. So. Actually, do you mind if I hit this one first? Yeah, I mean, I don't have that strong of a thought. So, yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I think we have to, to really key in on what the idea of punishment versus consequence is, right? And a lot of that, I think, has to do uh -huh. with intent. And players will pick up on that intent, right? If you've told players that there will be severe consequences, uh, and assuming that, you know, based on the context of the, the, the conversation that wasn't given here, to be fair, between Asmodeus, basically Satan, and a player, you're telling the player, hopefully, that despite bad things that may happen to you, this is not me punishing you for taking the wrong decision. Yeah, right? it's not it's not um, it's not GM to player punishment. It is it is character NPC to player character consequence. Yes. So what punishments should you enact or what, what consequence should you enact? There isn't much that's off the table right now. No. The one thing that I would say you for sure do not want to do is take away uh, like don't take away things that aren't relevant to this, right? If the Paladin has a Holy Avenger, don't take away his Holy Avenger. Unless he got it from, like, Lathander, and then in, uh, you know, they're fighting a demon of Asmodeus, and before he can slay the demon, it's got, like, two hit points left. It, you know, try it grabs the sword and teleports back to the hells. That's a consequence, right? Well, and then or, have Asmodeus show up and go, or I knew your paladin would not be able to do his deed without his holy sword. Come get it from me. If, or if, if that, he offered, that's a consequence. If he offered up the sword as, like, uh collateral or some shit yeah that's a consequence the player waking up after a long rest and just not having the sword and there being no explanation or reasoning behind it that's punishment because you're and that's in that case you're saying yeah it has to be well, a you consequence didn't pick the right decision. for an action yeah you you need to have a, an effect to the cause right the 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 uh the consequence has to be an equal amount 
like an equal degree with the action. Like if the action is really, really beneficial, then the consequence can be more severe. If the action is not that useful, the consequence can't be as severe. It's kind of the from a mechanical like train of thought. It's sort of the idea of if you have a really powerful ability, it costs more ammo. If you have a not as powerful ability, it costs less ammo, you know, whatever that ammo is. Yes. Similar idea. Uh, on a side note, if you're going to affect an NPC, right? You do not be afraid to kill character like favorite NPCs. You know, yes, they'll be upset about it, hopefully only in character. But again, if it feels like it could happen, if it feels like it follows a string of logic, if it the has an should, element of verisimilitude. Yes. <laughs> the players should understand and go, oh, crap, that was the consequence. Once again, right? Yeah, if there's an internal if, logic, if it follows. If the players are killed by a random vampire with no rhyme or reason, punishment. But if it's if the players get back to like Waterdeep or whatever, and the uh, an NPC runs up to them in tears and is like, insert character's name here, they're dead and they get there and it's like, you know, a, a, a vicious crime scene where the dagger of a cultist is in there, uh, is like in the chest of the NPC. They go, oh fuck, that was the consequence. Which isn't permanent in this instance because it's D&D and death isn't permanent. You're not just putting them in timeout. You're giving them a problem to which they can therefore create a solution to. I think that's that's a big one. That's a big thing with of consequence. Not not that you can necessarily undo the damage, but there you provide them a solution, a, a, sorry, a new problem and they provide you a solution. It doesn't just end. It's not a, a It's not a a, a a a closed like a closed-ended question. Right, it intrinsically has to be open-ended because it has to continue something. You I know? think I think uh, I think I can simplify this way down. TLDR, what you were getting at? Uh, Go for it. It has to be a devil's bargain. Is is really all this comes down to, and uh, what I mean by that is not just because Asmodeus is a devil. Um, devil's bargain meaning. And the, the person who posted this they already is 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 thinking about this because they mentioned that the player is going to get some perks, right? So it has to be. Player, you are being offered a bonus, a power, you know, something beneficial at the cost of something else, right? That is the consequence. It, it's going to cost you something. If you're coming at it from a narrative standpoint, then it could be something like. You can call upon Asmodeus to assist you in situations or, you know, take over or or hook you up with some sweet shit. Like maybe you need to get into the castle and you're like, Asmodeus, can you like make us fake IDs to get in? He's like, yeah, I got you, fam. But then the 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 bargain part, the bad part is that uh, Asmodeus is like, hey, I'm going to need you to kill 36 babies tomorrow. So uh, and you're like, what? Why? And you're like, well, I gave you those invites to the castle. So uh, come on, dead babies, let's go. Right. That's the that 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 could be how you could do it narratively. If you want to do it mechanically, you could just do, you know. The paladin player, I would like to activate Asmodeus's blade of death and you go, cool, cool, cool. Your charisma and strength are 20 fucking 25 for the rest of the day. Uh, once you long rest five levels of exhaustion the next day. Good luck. Right. Like that's the mechanical way you could go about it. But the point is, is that you get a good thing, but it's a devil's bargain. So you get a bad thing. If you remember Isaiah and Blades in the Dark, the way the devil's bargain mechanic worked was GM. Can I have a bonus die? GM says you can get that bonus die, but something else is going to happen. That's bad. Right. So, for example, uh, I'm trying I'm running from the, you know, from the cops, the blue coats. I'm trying to, uh, I'm going to just turn to the nearest building and bust my way in. Can I get a bonus die? And the GM says, yes, you can get a bonus die. But if you take this devil's bargain, the house is not empty. There's going to be someone in there when you bust in. Right. That's the devil's bargain situation. 
it's really just got to operate around that crux. And then as as an additional point to that, the devil's bargain has to be there because, you know, also the devil's bargains is the fun bit, right? Having the magical, cur you know, having the magic curse sword isn't that fun if the magic curse sword isn't super powerful, right? The curse sword is only fun because it's really powerful, right? In Critical Role, Grog picked up fucking, uh, what's his name? Vampire Man sword. The hell was his name? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Briarwood. Briarwood. Silas. Silas, yeah. Yeah. He picks up Silas Briarwood sword and uses it because it's a really good great sword but also the whole time he's using the sword the sword's like i just want incredible violence kill everything you see or i'm gonna take your soul and grog's like oh shit that's crazy <laughs> right it's only cool to have the cursed weapon if you get a cool power for it so that's that's that whole devil's bargain idea and then the other thing is the bargain has to be the player's choice right so you said oh the player character's a manchurian candidate don't just force it on them willy nilly, right? Don't just be like, oh, you hear the rustle of the leaves. You now have the incredible urge to mur murder the mayor. Don't do that. Say, you know, you make it a situation where the, the player has the option to sort of invoke the bargain, right? So let's go with the cursed sword situation. The, the Victoro Castellanter's like, I need you to go deal with this person. And you're like, uh, all right, fine, I'll go kill him. They bring their cursed sword. They they could draw their cursed sword and kill the person with it, in which case they'll get a sick bonus for using the cursed sword. Or they could just kill them with a the regular sword and not tap into the evil power shit, right? Because they like they don't want to in that moment. It has to be up to them because if you just force it on them, either a the player's not going to deal with it with, like you're going to choose to deal with it as, at some point and they're not going to want to or vice versa they're going to want to deal with it and you're not going to want to deal with it so you want to try and leave it in their hands to invoke it because that's how they'll feel more invested in the whole situation if they have a modicum of control over when it like really starts to come up this is a similar thing to like burning wheel has the flaws mechanic where you can get bonus dice if you invoke your character's flaw, but you could just ignore your flaw if you really just don't want to deal with it in the moment. But if you do it, you get a carrot, you know, it carrot in the stick, right? You're, you're being offered a carrot. So <laughs> that's the more TLDR version, which is pretty much you were saying it, it condensed down a little. You have to yeah, do that, that devil's bargain back and forth. Yes. That's, and that's the I meat mean, and potatoes. The the slight thing after that as well is, is the devil's bargain does not just begin at the initial contract, right? Yeah, it could be the whole way. What, yeah, what I was saying towards through. the end is that, yeah, the, the thing that I was really trying to key in at the end is a consequence with no recourse is a punishment. Is just a shitty punishment, yeah. The the fact that it can and will lead to something else is what makes it a consequence. It makes it feel like something that is intrinsic to the story and not just you taking shit away, which no one wants. Yes, yes. Just taking shit away and then giving nothing in return or not doing... Like, just taking stuff away just because for no particular reason defeats the point <laughs> that's yeah that's, that's about it fun idea though I do love the idea of the player getting a contract with Asmodeus and getting some sick devil powers or whatever fuck yeah dude that's all very, very into that